Welcome to our spoilers review of Dennis Foon's The Dirt Eaters. And if you haven't heard of this book, you are probably not alone because I probably wouldn't have heard of it either unless I knew this one. This was a Red Maple Reading Award book way back in I think the land of 2004. And the only reason I know that is because I went, yeah, to the Red Maple 2004. <gasps> I went to the Red Maple event because I was one of the five people in my school who actually did it. <laughs> Red Maple is you read like eight books and then you have to go and talk to teachers and prove that you read them. And there's like a fiction stream and a non-fiction stream. And I, of course, did the fiction stream. And this was one of the books. And I don't even know why I chose it. <laughs> I just kind of chose it, and I read it, and I had nightmares for weeks. Kind of terrifying. <laughs> um, okay, so in this world, this is some kind of post-epic war nuclear disaster novel where things have gotten so bad and are so polluted and full of chemicals and poisons that there are vast areas of land that are just uninhabitable and new flora and fauna have developed that will probably kill you. And Rowan is from this peaceful village of long light that like kind of hasn't been touched in a couple of generations. They've just been living in their own insular pacifist community. Except for this one day where raiders come in and slaughter everyone except him and his sister. So his sister is taken to the mysterious city, which I have no idea what goes on there. They didn't explain it really, except that they experiment on children. And Rowan is picked up by the cult of the friend. Creepy as hell. <laughs> okay, so when I was a kid and I originally read this, I had such a fascination with the cult of the friend. Like it just, it blew my, my little tiny, like 12 year old mind because you know, I could kind of recognize the foundations of like the cult of the friend. And I'm like, wait, He's using religion to control people. He's lying to them. It's not real. Like, it's just like, <laughs> <what? laughs> This was a new concept. This was like, new concept. changed everything. And that, like, as I've said multiple times, like, cults and books are one of my, like, I'm totally, like, down for that. Like, I find it a really interesting <laughs> trope because the use of religion in worlds definitely opens up doors for explanation of like what the society is like and what like the factions of like non main religion reflect on that society. It's it's a great tool for it's stuff. Awesome. But in this <laughs> it's just like Whoa. it's just it's it's terrifying because he does the like yeah, they're super nice and friendly and awesome, but something's not right. They're the cult of the friend. What you, could be wrong? You know there's something wrong, but you don't know what it is. But look, they're doing sand art, and he's learning how to fight, and, like, Saint is so nice, but, you know, he's really obsessed with, like, military history. But that's nothing! <laughs> nah. They ride a motorcycle! <laughs> so anyways, he's taken in by this cult and, you know, all is well and good until he discovers that A, they want him to slit another member's throat for an initiation, he's not down with that, and also they kind of murdered his village for the city and gave his sister to the city. Yeah, there's like seven, there are only 75 brothers and there can only ever be 75 brothers and so one must go for another to join. And of course, who do they decide to get rid of but Feeder, who doesn't really have another name, he's their cook. And that didn't make sense to me. Like, why <laughs> kill your cook? <laughs> Seriously, he makes good food. Feeder, like, you know, he doesn't want to be there. Like, he's upset. He's like, he knows he's doomed. And then Brother Raven talks to him one night and does this really creepy thing where there's like a cut behind his ear with like a bulge under it and it pulsates. I don't think it pulsated. He said it pulsated when, like, Rowan was talking to him. And it's like, what is it? It's so creepy. It's never explained, I don't think. It's so creepy. And, like, during my reread, that was something that still, like, made me extremely uncomfortable. <laughs> so anyways, Rowan nearly takes Saint's head off, doesn't kill him, runs away into the wasteland yeah, where he... He has this wicked story. Yeah. Uh, where he runs into a character named Lumpy. Now, Lumpy has a very interesting backstory that ties into the nature of the world. Uh, there, uh. <laughs> there are these things called mortics, and uh. they are bugs, and they will swarm you, and then they will burrow under your skin very, very painfully. And then while they're chilling under your skin, they're uh. like, hey, this is great. Looks I'm gonna like have babies. Yeah. I'm going to settle down here. 
Have Make some, a home. Yep, so they lay eggs under your skin. And the worst pain you will ever feel is when their larvae eat their way out. Uh, if I'm making it sound pretty tame. Oh, God, it's the, so gross. The way it sounds in the book is, like, worse. Because the writing style is very dry and very clinical. But for some reason, when, like, Lumpy's recounting the more ticks, it's just, like... No, oh, that's why there are craters on my face. And I'm just like, ah! Enough to make you panic. Yeah. <laughs> um, Rowan is safe, though, because he picked up this white cricket, which is like magic. They call it a snow cricket. And apparently the Mortex don't like it. So. Because they get eaten. Nom, 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 nom. So Rowan has also been seeing the dirt eaters around. He sees them when he's awake. He sees them when they're, he's asleep. Um, they somehow train him to fight, and they tell him that he is this giant destiny that he is going to have to fulfill. He's on his way, he's traveling with Lumpy, and they end up looking for a hospital which takes them to like this opposite paradise it's oasis. It's like the, think Rivendell. It is the equivalent of Rivendell. Yeah. It is a house of healing. You know, all the people there, they were actually around during Rowan's grandfather's time when he founded the village of Longlight. Like, they were involved in that big war that destroyed the land. The he, chemicals in the rocks yeah. have kept them alive, but they can't have children. They give a lot of, like, insight of kind of what happened and why people are divided the way they're divided. They don't tell you, like, why the war happened. Or no, anything, but it's but... just like, so there was a war, it went to hell, and this is how her humanity survived, and... We're still here. So off they go to find the old goat woman dirt eater. Mm -hmm. She's like, hey, come here. I can help you out. And so they end up in this village, which is run by this guy who's like your average creepy town running guy. Turns out that he encourages all the women in the village to get pregnant, and then they sell their children to the city to be experimented on. Yay. He's totally gotten rid of the whole family <laughs> unit. Like... That's kind of creepy yeah. and, like, cool, like, because that's not something you normally see in a lot of, like, YA fantasy. There is still the family unit. Now, granted, similar, like, even in The Giver, where family units are assigned. Yeah. They still, still exist. Having, yeah. And here it's just like, yeah, people have babies. We put the babies in the orphanage. And then on family day, we ship the babies and children to the Out. city. Hey. Some of them get adopted. The rest get cut. And I'm just like... Whoa. 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 Yeah, we tell them they're going to get ice cream on the journey. They get right in the yeah. van. Oh, and like, even just the way they deal with it, because at one point, the girl, Alandra, is talking to the woman who runs the orphanage, and she's like, oh, by the way, the, um, the, the city says that not to give them liquid eight hours before they come. And just like, the normal, like, how that seems so normal to them, it's just like, yeah, you know. Yeah, I guess if it's going to solve a problem they have on the journey, sure, why not? We but it's just like, that means water. that they're just going to go and, like, get operated on. Like, they don't want anything in their stomach. Yeah. It's just, like, so, like, creepy. This whole, this whole book is kind of creepy. Yeah, it's, like, it's unsettling. So, anyways, the way the book kind of ends is, you know, Rowan's being chased by Saint kind of across his journey. But he, Alandra, which is the goat eater... Goat woman. Goat woman. They are like, okay, we're going to rescue these kids. They go, they're running, Saint chases them. Roan finally kills Saint, and they kind of get away. But there's a really interesting thing that happens before Saint dies. And that's, they're kind of like standoff, and Saint's like, by saving these children, you're damning the rest of them. Because you're focusing on this group. But there are always going to be more. You're not solving a problem. <laughs> and I was just like... Whoa! <laughs> Shit! Uh, maybe we should have listened to this guy before we pushed like, him off a cliff. Yeah, his his methods. Like, I'm not saying he is like. It's just there's a lot more gray than you might yeah. have been used to as a kid. Yeah, like you know when you're a kid and you read this, you're like, he is the bad guy, and I'm gonna dislike him, and he's creepy, and he's bad, and you whatever know. he says is wrong. But now as an adult, I'm just like. Shit, he's right. Like, like, yeah, maybe you should have gone with him. Like, his methods are wrong. Slaughtering, like, even the slaughtering of Longlight, like, they talk about these raids that they go on where they basically just go into berserk mode just to, like, let off steam and just murder, 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 murder. What is this? Like, this book deals with so many random things. <sighs> 
Oh, and you know what? I was pretty much fine with everything in this book except for the blood drinkers. And I think, <laughs> I think this is the same thing that happened to me as a kid. Because I remember the... Like, I remember being, like, terrified of those. Not the Mortics, not everything else. It was the blood drinkers. Because the way they describe their entrance when Roan first, like, encounters them... It's so is, nonchalant. It's just like, he's like, oh, shit, someone's coming. Guess I gotta hide. And in come these, like pale beings riding on horses with like sharpened teeth and their ears have been cut off and they're chasing these scabby beasts through this like wasteland and these beasts like know what's going to happen to them and they like rope them tie them down and then just like bite into their necks and these beasts are just like fuck my they life they are a vision of horror albino riders swinging weighted ropes over their head as they draw closer he sees their skin is wax and their eyes pink their mouths hang open revealing sharp fangs None of the men seem to have ears. The ghoulish riders immediately are off their horses and upon the exhausted animals. Rowan shudders with revulsion as he watches each man pick a beast, place his arms around its neck, and sink its fangs into its throat. The attackers gulp mouths full... I can't even read this. The attackers gulp mouthfuls of blood as the animals lie heaving, eyes bulging. The man sucks intently on the trembling animal, then raises his head. Blood splashes across his torso, his mouth a gash of red. He sniffs the air. Finally, the riders are seated. They go on their horses and pull large plastic bottles out of their saddlebags. Rowan knows bottles of this side are hard to come by, but it's been many decades since their last plastic was manufactured, unless the masters of the city have found a way. The fang men drain the animals of blood into their bottles. The beasts passively accept this, this further insult. The men untie the beasts, return to their horses, and head off. The injured animals slowly get back onto their feet and walk unsteadily away. And see, I just think of the effects of blood loss, and yeah. like after about like three of the, these drainings, they're probably gonna die. Like they're just gonna. And just like how detached it is, right? Like, like just like, hey, this is what we do. Like the entire that's that is how this book is written. It's, it's just kind of like this happened, and then this happened, and you're just like, this is awful. <laughs> and then he's like, after this incident, Rowan's walking away, and he stumbles across this like mummified body that has clearly just been like has been drained by these blood drinkers and just left there. And he's like, well, shit. I love it when vampiric creatures are actually creepy. Yeah. And actually scary. And so that's one thing this book does that's like spot on. Spot on. I'm not gonna lie, the way it's written at first is kind of hard to get into just because it's very dry, but if you stick with it, it's worth it. Yeah, I, I didn't find it too bad actually at all. It's just like, oh, okay. It's just because it's written in that weird kind of voice, you know, yeah. like it's just like... Even the title of this yeah. book is off-putting. Like, be honest, like you're like the dirt... What? They, yeah. Like, y you have been taught very much so as a child that you do not put dirt in your mouth and eat it because no. <laughs> Early childhood lesson number one, we do not eat dirt. Um, Read it. I don't know how easy it is to find this book. I haven't looked for it. I have a feeling it's pretty difficult. Yeah. But if you can get your hands on it, do. It's definitely worth it. I'm glad that I bought all of them. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited to finish it again because <laughs> I don't remember what happens. <laughs> like, I had snatches. I had the Mortex. And I had... Like, ice cream is kind of important for some reason, and I think there's an ice cream truck. And there's a cult with a guy with a ridiculous name. That's what I took away from the first book. But, the, like, the second and third book, I don't remember at all. I remember the blood drinkers, and I remember, for some reason, being very shocked that his sister was important. And I don't know why, reading this book, because she's, like, mentioned all the time. But in the third one, I'm like, why are we getting her perspective? She was never mentioned. She is unimportant. I don't know what was wrong with me. Anyways. <laughs> Read it. Tell us what you think about it in the comments. How crazy does this book sound to you? Because I'm pretty sure we sound nuts right yeah. now. Yeah. So, bye guys. <laughs>